Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So obviously the last few days have been pretty major in it as far as the announcements that have come out of GGG. In particular, we've got essentially a Ranger reveal coming for PoE2 on the 21st of March. We've got the 3.24 Necropolis League being announced, finally. Uh, just waiting for the details of that one. And what looks like GGG Live, which is a new live service uh, model, which almost looks like a double down of community engagement and doing basically all the right things to make sure PoE 2 and PoE 1 are both great games and looked after into the future. We've also received an update on Twitter as of today, or X, uh, for quality of life changes where the Pantheon tree is now going to be a global stat. But something else that happened over the last few days that has sort of skated by and nobody's looked at is the fact that Grinding Gears finally released their financial report for 30 September 2023. Now, obviously there's a bit of time that's happened between that point, but in a sort of cursory look at it, it shows a narrative of a huge level of growth in the development internally by which they're spending money to essentially really boost up their operations. And so I thought I'd approach this uh, video with a little bit of a different narrative compared to what others might, because one of my real life skill sets is that I'm actually an accountant. So I can read these things and make a little bit of sense of them. So anyway, let's dig into the financial statements of Grinding Gear Games and uh, see what trends we pick up on, interestingly. Uh, and you'll be surprised. It, while the total comprehensive income looks bad, it's actually not. Or at least that's what it looks like to me. It actually looks like something else is going on, which is very indicative to uh, what we can see in the announcements that we're getting right now. Okay, so never in your wildest dreams do you think that the skill set that you went to university for three and a half years for would actually come useful in a gaming sense. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to dig straight into this. All right, so for any of those uh, guys out there who haven't dealt with financial statements or annual reports before, basically, uh, separate comprehensive income. You've got notes. They go to the disclosure pages. I'm doing hand signals here. Um, and then basically that gives you the, uh, the breakdown of each of these numbers, right? So a couple of really interesting things that I noticed in the statement of comprehensive income when I started having a look through. And by the way, the, these are not like the craziest looking financials. I would assume they are operating on like, uh, these almost look like special purpose. Anyway, um, so digging into this revenue year on year, pretty comparative. Uh, presentation's a bit odd. Usually put three zeros in there, but they're not doing that. But anyway, uh, so it looks pretty okay year on year. We can see a little bit of a slump uh, and that's basically off of the back that, I guess, other games are coming out, Diablo 4 has come out, and so this has dropped, so revenue is down, which is okay, like, that happens year on year, it's not unordinary for that to happen. Uh, now, the interesting thing here, foreign exchange gain or loss, this is indicative of the current economic uh, issues that all of our economies are feeling, so yes, they lost a little bit of money in their, um, econ uh, I guess, in their foreign ex exchange gain or loss, now, cost of inventory, <clears throat> they don't really have a high cost of inventory. Whatever makes this up, they're not disclosing and they don't need to. Um, but this is fine. Depreciation and amortization, though, is where this gets interesting. Now, the common misconception is that depreciation is for physical assets only, but you can depreciate intangible assets. Well, you generally do. Uh, so we, we have disclosures 11, 12, and 13. So what is this showing? Well... The metric that I've got here is we've had a 93% increase in depreciation. Now, you don't just change depreciation in one year like you can. It's not recommended. But generally, the approach with depreciation is if it's going up in such a drastic level, that means that there are more assets that have been acquired by Grinding Gear Games and or constructed by Grinding Gear Games. Now, what's really interesting is if we go to the financial position statement, which tells us this answer, we look at property, plant, and equipment hasn't really moved. Intangible assets is enormously moved. In fact, there's been a 56% growth in intangible assets, which is enormous. And so if we have a look at their cash, right, we can see that they are dumping money into something, right? They went from $92.9 million in holdings a year before in cash and cash equivalents. And then they've dumped out cash, which we'll have a look at Node 8 shortly, and they've basically dropped off, what's that, 32, nearly $32.1 million in one year. That's a big amount of cash to drop out in one year. But then they've converted that into intangible assets. So if we go to note 13 in the statements, and we're going to do a little bit of scrolling here because we're just going straight off the cuff. 
because uh, I find this interesting, but I don't know how many people may or may not find this interesting. They got a lot of stuff in here. It's really interesting. Financials are really cool. Um, but we can see non-current intangibles or non-current leased assets. This is their properties that they're in, by the way. Uh, you're required to disclose that. Intangible assets is what's really interesting. So I only just, I w just briefly looked at this and this gets a lot more interesting than what I originally thought that it was going to. So the way that this schedule reads, right, is so you have an opening balance, right? And this is how assets generally work. So they had about $22 million in work in progress during, uh, at October 1st, 2022. Work in progress would be, for example, Path of Exile 2 in development, right? Um, and or other assets that are in development. So what we can see is during the year, they then added $18.3 million in additions. They had some disposals or transfers, which was capitalized uh, soft, in capitalized software development. And then they, by 30 September, 2023, ended in a balance of 35 million. So they went up by 14, like was that 13.9 million in uh, work in progress. And then this ended them out on a total gross position of $88.2 million in capitalized or work in progress and capitalized intangibles. Now, the reason why this is significant is because these numbers indicate massive levels of development in their existing products. So that $35.925 million, we can take it as very likely their investment partially most likely in PoE1, but predominantly in PoE2. And so they really ramped up by almost, you know, 90, 80 to 90 percent of development in the last 12 months to really hammer the hell out of Path of Exile 2 to get it onto the market in time. So they have really ramped up their operations. Now, this is not the only indicator of them really ramping up the operations and really hammering home to push POE 2 out the door. There's another really clear indicator of this as well. Employee benefits. All right. So what this is indicating is not that everybody's match. Now, there are two instances why this would increase, right? Number one, you're hiring more employees, which you have what's called employee benefits or vested leaves, right? Annual leave, things like that. Long service leave. Uh, I'm not sure about New Zealand law, but we have long service in Australia. Sick leave doesn't count. Usually it can, but it's usually by certified agreement. But basically what this is indicating is between 22 and year 2022 and year 2023 there was an 82% increase in vested uh employee benefit employee benefits or employee benefits this means they've went on a mass hiring spree most likely it's very unlikely that this would be an exacerbation of your existing staff base and normally you wouldn't want to have this much well it's not even physically possible to have that much leave accruing in 12 months um, depending on your employees and whatnot. Like it could be like you'd have to be really working your employees into the ground. Uh, but what this is indicating is they they have been hiring like mad dogs and basically ramping up their operations. This is then further reflected in their intangible asset growth. And then this is reflected in their spend off the balance sheet as well, basically in what we can see in cash. So if we go up to their cash note, uh, we can also see that indicative... That's the earnings. We can see this indicative in their ending cash as well. So they've really drawn down on deposits and then essentially use their spare cash to invest back into the company's uh, development, which is a really good strategy to build a quality product. And anyone that deals in R&D will tell you, you want to keep putting money into your products to be able to get the best end uh, possible result. Now, this has resulted in a reduced amount of earnings. Obviously, this would because they're putting money back into uh, the gains that they're developing as opposed to distributing um, share distributions out to their shareholders and whatnot. Maybe there's another agreement. Who knows? Not sure what that is. Haven't read that far into it. Uh, what this is telling you from a financial statement reporting standpoint and or from a narrative standpoint of where the game is going for Path of Exile and Path of Exile 2, and this is feeding into the announcements that we've just had, and I thought I'd just do a really quick overview of this, is that there is a drastic, drastic uplift in operations at GGG, which is indicating they are really hammering and ha going hammer and nail to exacerbate and really get a quality product out there. Also, their operating expenses has went up pretty drastically as well, um, which is another indicator that they are spending a lot more money 
to be able to satiate the needs of putting out a, another secondary and a better product on the market. Anyway, overall, my take on these financial statements is this is indicative of a company that is spending money, not penny pinching, and putting their cash back into a game as opposed to trying to derive a profit, which is really important because we don't see this behavior from Blizzard. We never see this behavior from Blizzard. We're seeing this behavior from this developer, and this also feeds into the whole GGG Live thing, which we'll talk about now. Okay, so the next big thing that we learned from the announcements that came out over the last few days was around GGG Live. And right now it's speculatory as to what this might be, but I've got some assumptions around what this sort of looks like it's taking the form of. Now, there are, the history of grinding gear games and path of exile has been it is one of the few successful live service games that are on the market being that you have uh, three to four expansions every year predominantly four expansions every year and there's a consistent stream of content now the way that this generally works from a, a player base perspective if we have a look at the steam charts is it constantly is cycling up and down uh, as far as the graph goes now from what we learnt from ExileCon last year is that PoE 1 and PoE 2 are going to be running basically in alternating areas of the, of the league cycle. So say you would get to month 2, you'll get a new league with Path of Exile 1. Then you'll get to month 2 of Path of Exile 1's new league or month, uh, month I guess, after month 1, you'd get a brand new PoE 2 league and so on and so on, which basically means that you're going to consistently be playing Path of Exile, whether it be one or two at any point in time. And what it looks like is they don't want to turf the old game and basically put it out to the ether, which is great. For those of us who really have played the hell out of Path of Exile 1, we're still going to come back to PoE 1. Now, I in particular, I'm going to be playing both, uh, probably more so two when it comes out, because I'm super keen to learn a new game and it's just going to be a freaking awesome game. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means if they don't have a plan to attack that, it's going to be an absolute disaster. Uh, now, you know, we look at things like Overwatch, for example, is a great example of where, you know, they've tried to run a more or less live service model. And, you know, Overwatch 2 was just not good. And the reception was not good either. And it looked like they were just basically reskinning their original game and turfing the old game into the dust. And that's something that you can see that GG isn't looking to do with their original game. It also stands to be a, a passion project for Chris Wilson, as he's made very clear that that was the game that you know he came up with in a, in his uh, in his garage, and very likely that's the game that is going to still exist in the next ten years' time, depending on how the market reacts to it. The reasons why this is good and we'll get into the live service modeling soon is because the player base is going to have something to go to at any point in time it allows them to have market dominance as well with obvious competitors being last epoch and titan quest 2 coming around the horizon we won't talk about diablo 4 it doesn't count it didn't happen um and so basically what we can see here is you know they really need to invest in a very clear model that provides quality engagement with the player base information for creators as well because it does grinding gear games does really anchor down on creators to unwind and interpret and disperse things beyond themselves um and then basically just having an overall uh two-way level of communication with the community to make sure that the decisions that they're making moving forwards uh, quality decisions and in the interests of the game we've learnt this the hard way when there was community backlash and there were huge player base numbers dropping out and now that's predominantly more damaging to grinding gear grinding gears because we have diablo 4 be it not the greatest comp competitor ever it still has an enormous player base either way you shake it and then last epoch which exists on the other side of it which has most likely stolen players over from a uh, path of exile so GGG really needs to pick up their game and make sure that their communication with the community is absolutely airtight. Now, one of the things that they've done to remediate bad decision-making in the past is they've been having a lot more community engagement with content creators around interviews and things like that with still more to come, which is great. That means we're getting a lot of information about Path of Exile 2 and a direct link to the developers. And it's pretty clear that they're working with the community and or they're taking notes from the community around what we want to see in the game. As opposed to just anchoring on their vision, they're actually coming down and meeting us halfway 
which is what we want from this game and poe2 that you know both games essentially what what could it take the form of well i would say it's going to be a, a pretty clear plan that's going to map out during the year the key dates in advance for all you know players so you can plan around things i reckon we're going to get basically a map or a forward map of you know where the games are going uh we're going to get more details more frequent updates we're going to get more engageable feedback points with the developers potentially but more or less we're going to get a lot more information now looking at the financial statements last year was really interesting because we found around five to six million dollars was the cost of exocon wasn't a cheap event now the question will be if they're looking at a much larger player base is that something they're going to do a lot more frequently and it very likely could be that's another way that you'd get the player base interested but also the other thing is they are looking at upscaling and you can see this in the amount of investment and that's why looking at the financials was so important they're looking at upscaling and because of that they need to be able to communicate to an upscaled audience at a gr greater magnitude to what they've been doing previously now they peaked at around 200 to 230 or 40,000 on steam that's going to be a much higher number moving forwards into PoE2 coming out. And if PoE2 is as big as what we all think it's going to be, it's going to basically parallel uh, a Blizzard launch uh, to an element of it. It's very much year of the ARPG right now, and they really need to get it right. And I think they're on the right path with creating an actual true life service model where they actually set a map of what's to come. They make it very clear the times and dates to everybody about what's happening and they also provide clarity around when people will receive information uh, what you know what's coming up problems that's the big thing we want two-way communication where we're getting acknowledgement for yep we did make a mistake now the opposite way to approach that would be campfires ignore all the feedback and just do whatever you want and this looks like a completely opposite direction that grinding gears is taking which is great it's indicative of that they really want to see a quality product out to the market and i'm all for this i think it's fantastic i think that ggd live is a double down on their already pretty strong communication with the community now they will be looking to circumvent bigger issues like what we learned a few leagues ago especially with the archnem system that decision making they made back then did drop the player base for that league i think it was three point maybe three point two zero or 3.19 anyway the bad decision making at the time and the lack of clarity around decision making did result in a huge player base dip and with a higher projected volume of players they're not going to want to damage their forward game and or their existing game over something as mediocre as this is our vision we're standing by it so I'd say they're really going to work with the community moving forward to make sure that a repeat of that doesn't happen. And that's one of the best things about Grinding Gears is they've made a lot of mistakes over the years, but they've apologized for that. They've given us things back, worked with the community, and have finally come to a point where they can acknowledge and go, okay, we need to make sure that we're getting this perfectly. We need to engage with people, and we need to make sure we're making a game that both sort of moves in the direction of our vision but doesn't alienate the player base at the same time and i feel like that's where we're currently at which is a really good direction to be moving in especially with a brand new second iteration of the game around the horizon and that's what i think ggg live will take the form of i reckon there'll be a lot more monthly updates i reckon we'll be getting a lot more incremental hotfix and patch note updates We'll be getting a lot more frequent information on the lead, lead up to leagues, in particular for league planning and things like that, and build planning and all that sort of stuff that people like to do. Uh, but anyway, as an overall, I, I think it's just a good direction to take to give us a lot more information and allow us to have the adequate feedback we need to have to put through to the game devs to be able to have the game that we want at the end of the day. Anyway, if you like this format of video, this is a little different to what I normally do. I do have some build uh, videos coming out and build testing stuff for pre-season and things like that, or pre-league if we want to call it that. Uh, drop me a like, drop me a sub below. Don't forget to follow the Twitch as well. I stream over there quite often, almost every other night or every night. And also uh, Twitter and X, I'll put a link down below. I'm trying to actually get active on that for the first time ever. I haven't really done that very much, so... See so how we go. Anyway, until next time, uh, have a good one, and I'll see you guys later.